idea to start our gaps. That Gyarados VMAX will certainly be uh, a major like factor potentially here, but maybe more Gyarados V. Gyarados VMAX's attacks are good, but that uh, Rage Serve attack from Gyarados V could be an important factor now. Seems like there's uh, Mulligan so far in the setup for waiting to get this game started. Yep. It's going to be a good one. And as we look at our players, you can see Nicolo. His accomplishment lists this tournament. I mean, he is absolutely making a name for himself today at this event and going down in the history books with the Gyarados VMAX. And look at this. <laughs> On Alexander's <laughs> side, a very similar list of accomplishments. Not only are we seeing two very unique decks, we're seeing two less experienced, less well-known players really pushing forward into this event. Indeed, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if I recall. I know it's Alexander's first regional tournament. It might be Nicolo's as well, which is uh, very, very surprising. Uh, yeah, not 100% sure. I mean, we get those accomplishments from the players themselves. We back check them as well with our systems. And that's what we have is uh, this tournament for both of these players. We do see prize cards now going out. Just one Archeops for Alexander. Oh, and the Gyarados VMAX in the prizes. Might not be seen at this game. Indeed. I think the biggest story here from the prizes is, or are the stadium cards, the Mesa Gosa being prized for Alexander, could prove a little detrimental in trying to counter that early Path to Peak. And uh, Niccolo prizing that Path to Peak could lead to perhaps having to V-Star for it instead of naturally having it. He does play four copies of it to maximize the chances of hanging, having it on turn two when it is the most disruptive. And here we go. We're going to get started with our game. It seems like Nicolo is the one to start us off. Yes, let's hear some noise for both of our finalists. This game is underway, and it looks like Alexander is kicking things off. Lugia V in the active spot going up against the Arceus V from Nicolo. Now, as Lugia V star player, He's got the bare minimum already. Lucia V in the active. We started that. And Ultra Ball to discard at least one Archeops, it looks like. What do you want to try to establish when you at least have this start to your setup? Whenever you're anticipating a potential judge on Nicolo's end. Uh, definitely get that Archeops in the discard pile already. Make sure that you accomplish that. And we see Alexander eyeing the Luminion already, which is, I think, very smart if you know that there's mm. going to be a lot of Path to a Peak coming into play, preemptively getting that supporter is quite important. Now, the Path to Peak would stop the incoming Lugia V Star Starbirth. However, um, like it's a win-win. If Alexander doesn't counter the Path to a Peak, then uh, that means they're not using Starbirth, so you've delayed them. And if they do counter the Path to a Peak, that means you will have access to your Starbirth. But the threat of Lugia V Star on the Arceus V cannot be uh, underestimated. Looks like a second Lugia V hitting the bench as well. An energy prepped on the active could also help Alexander get out of a potential sticky situation with a read the wind. Never really what you want to do on turn two, but prepping for the worst case scenario. Now we kick things over to Nicolo. Gets that Bidoof down on the bench. Of course, Biberel, extremely important for his deck. That's how he draws cards. That's how he continues to hit the pieces that he needs. And we also see that Hisuian Heavy Ball being played immediately. Looking at all six of those prize cards, we'll be able to take any basic Pokemon that he sees there, add it to his hand, and it does look like Arceus V will be the choice. Heavy Ball taking the place of that Arceus. Almost a blessing in disguise that Arceus V, as it allows Nicolo to establish a second Arceus V in case the active does go down. And when going second, that's very important, establish another Arceus V, and probably that very crucial energy attachment dedicated on the bench, because the active Arceus, you don't know exactly what your opponent will do. Ooh. They are holding the Luminion. Yeah, this hand does not look very good from Nicolo. There's an energy to attach to one of these Arceus, and then I think Serena, the only supporter able to be played. It's been a while since I've seen a Serena in a Pokemon TCG deck. What do you think of this? I know, there's definitely diminishing returns for Serena, right? We're getting new Pokemon EXs, but no more Vs. So the versatility of having the costing option as well as the draw option is less and less appealing. Ooh. But so far, like right now, you're definitely grateful that it's actually the Serena instead of a boss's orders. And we do see Nicolo benching that Slay King V, an attacker that definitely could come up in this game. It costs a massive four energy to attack, but can deal 260 damage. Only three cards drawn from the Serena. 
And there's just really not much going on in this hand. Nothing useful drawn completely dead hand at this point in time. And yeah, a defensive escape rope uh, into slacking. It does have 230 HP, which means it's out of range of getting KO'd by Lukia V-Star. And now it's on Alexander to make something happen here and take advantage of this slower-ish start. Alexander is going to immediately play down that Luminion searched out on the previous turn with the Ultra Ball and Professor Burnett being brought to the front of the deck immediately. An excellent supporter choice for these Lugia V-Star decks where what you want to do is get a pair of Archeops into the discard pile, get yourself that Lugia V-Star set up and use Summoning Star, resurrect them, bring them back and get those Primal Turbos rolling so you can get tons of extra special energy cards into play. Indeed. With this play, I fully expect Alexander to already be holding the Lugia V-Star in hand. I'm, I'm not sure if I saw it, but I'd imagine it is there. And this accomplishes the number two goal, right? Number one goal, get the Lugia V. Number two, get your Archives going, and then you're good to go. Now, with this play, Alexander does have a pretty weak hand, but I think it's a worthwhile play. You know, you're Absolutely. getting your board fully set up. You don't have any other supporters really moving forward. There does look like there is a boss's orders in the hand, but no Ionos or researches to keep getting through the deck. But I think getting the board set up was most important for Alexander, you agree? Oh, certainly, certainly. Now, if in a different situation, uh, with if the escape rope had not been played and there was an extra energy in hand, maybe it would have been worth it to go boss, hunt down the Arceus V whilst establishing only one Arceus only because you really delay your opponent's setup. But with that escape rope, I think this is pretty good. Um, you're accomplishing what you want to do. Turn to Lugia V-Star with double Arceus. You'll figure out the rest later. Four energies being added to this Lugia V-Star, ready to begin with the Tempest Dive. No powerful colorless energy in the standard format any longer, so 220 is going to be the cap here. Slaking V having that 230 hit points will hang around for a little bit longer. Like you mentioned for Nicolo, it was a defensive play, but still for Alexander, getting the first hit, excellent. Now, so far Alexander would not have any way to know that Nicolo's hand is really bad, so we're going to have to rely on this top deck to really make a game, and it's not, it's just a vengeful punch, so... Very underwhelming turn here by Nicolo. Could share and scare the slacking. There we go. Pretty decent play. And then with the V Guard, we are now completely safe from a KO from Lugia V Star, but not from a potential Weird Gear V. So we'll have to see mm. who that factors into play. It will have to be top decked, but hey, it could happen. This ends up being decent for Nicolo. Obviously, not as good as you would have hoped. No turn to Arceus V Star to get rolling, but the Sharon's Care basically erases Alexander's previous turn, and you can get a bunch of extra energy cards into play with this Trinity Charge. Now, a bit of a question, where are these energy cards going? And it does look like it is Arceus V. Would it ever be tempting to power up the slacking? It would be, just based on the 230 HP. Um, no way to know if there's a boss thing coming or not. I like the energy split, not fully committing to one or the other. But yeah, so far, uh, Alexander doing what he needs to do, Nicolo barely surviving and making the most out of the cards in his hand, which is always what you want to do, but definitely if he, if it was up to him, this would not be what he would be doing right now. You'd want to delay with Path to B, you'd want to have your b barrel set up, Arceus, drawing cards, all of that good stuff. We are back over to Alexander's turn, using a Primal Turbo at the moment, searching through the deck, doing a little bit of prize checking as well, I would imagine. Seeing maybe if that Luxray is hanging around, that reversal energy, those kind of key one of cards that definitely could come up. Though I do have to say, Alexander is more than likely going to be the one that is ahead on prize cards in this position. Where do you want to see these energy cards go down, Pablo? Of course, a couple of Primal Turbos able to be utilized here. And even if you're not using them right now, getting them in play is great for Weirdier later on. Definitely great for Weirdier. I think that's the biggest thing here. I like that gift energy on the Archives means if there is ever a boss KO on that. At least you get the reward off the gift. You also have that pivot potentially already uh, prepared in case your Lugia does go down. But at Ooh. this point, yeah, I don't see Lugia going down anytime soon. And the boss's orders will get Alexander ahead in this game, bringing up that Arceus V, taking two prize cards. The draw for turn for Nicolo is just a basic water energy, not at all what 
you hope to see definitely things not going according to plan. Is it a power edge angle right now, Pablo? Uh, probably is. There's nothing else you can do at this point. The V-Guard does keep you safe. And I do want to point out something interesting. We did see in top four, Alexander try to attack with only three energy because they were hitting under a Lugia. And now we see the energy hidden right here. So uh. a little bit uh, clearer Risky. play field, I think, would benefit uh, both us as viewers and also himself. But we'll have to see. Uh, right now, you're in commanding position. You're about to. You already took two prizes. You're about to. Uh, damage the Arceus, the Sharon Scare has already been um, utilized. We'll have to see uh, if Niccolo can ever come back from this. It's not looking great. I do believe that Alexander has Professor's Research in hand. Sure enough, that will be played. Discarding the hand to draw seven fresh new cards. More plays, more options available to work with. Do we have the Weird Deer V utilized at this point? It doesn't look like it. I don't see the Nest Ball, nothing like that. <laughs> no great draws here to realize the weirder. I feel like if you're Alexander, you just want to get more ahead with such a weak board. You definitely happily commit all your energies onto that, but no way to search for it. So just a, just some damage, which still is great. Yeah, Alexander could not be in a better position at this point, I don't think. 190 damage from that Tempest dive again, thanks to the reduction of the V-Guard energy. Now the draw for turn for Nicolo. Can he find something to keep him in this game? Okay, not too bad. A judge can be utilized. That will not only get Nicolo some fresh cards to work with, but also disrupt Alexander after playing that research. Both players now shuffling their hands into the deck, drawing four cards apiece. Nicolo certainly looking for an Arceus V-Star. Now, if he does find the Arceus V-Star, 200 damage minus 30 from the V-Guard is 10 short oh, wow. from knocking out the Lugia V-Star. <laughs> and that's where the Vengeful Punch could come in. But oh. you would imagine Alexander would retreat to take the knockout. So Nicolo had mechanics. it in hand last turn, didn't attach it. Oh, it's only when, is it only when it gets KO'd? It's only when it okay, gets okay, KO'd, okay, yes, yeah. yes. It's not like a Rocky Helmet It's not a Rocky type, Helmet, right. yeah. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't quite work out the same. So smart from Nicolo, of course, to hold on to it. Does find Bibarel at least off the first card. Can get a little bit of extra draw power here, thanks to those industrious incisors. Also has another basic Pokemon to put down. Looks like another Arceus V. I have to wonder how many energy cards are even left in the deck at this point to utilize that Trinity Nova to full effect. That and also the liability of the 220 HP, right? So I think it's all going to come down to this lacking somehow becoming the hero and taking a lot of prizes. Three cards drawn. Is there an Arceus V-Star? card. Exactly what Nicolo wanted to see. And now that higher HP Pokemon is in play. Not going to be able to take this knockout. And if, yeah, this is 10 damage short, you said, right, Pablo? Yep. And that Vengeful Punch being attached. I do believe Nicolo has a choice belt in this list. With this Vengeful Punch being attached, that's not going to be an option to grab off of something like a Starbirth. Yep, no Starbirth in order to search for that. So, yeah, attaching that could have been... I, I don't want to call it a mistake because you don't know what you're going to draw, but if you're hoping to draw the best combination of cards, and especially with Arceus Vista where you can search for anything you want, maybe keep that option open. You know right? what Nicolo could do? Lost Vacuum plus Choice Belt. He could. <laughs> that is very true. Those cards are available to him, and... It's interesting, we were talking about Serena in the beginning of the game and how there's diminishing returns uh, because there's new EX Pokemon and no more V Pokemon being released. And that applies to V-Guard as well, but V-Guard coming in clutch for both players right now yeah, in true. this final match. Still a strong card. There are still plenty of Pokemon V in the meta, accompanied, of course, by many Pokemon EX. Any two cards available now off of this Star Birth V Star Power. What can Nicolo find? Is eyeing up the Radiant Greninja. A little bit of extra right. card draw never seems too bad. No. I think if you're Nicolo, you're hoping your uh, opponent attacks into the eventual punch. Oh, I was about to say, I think he was about to do it. I did see the choice mm -hmm. belt grabbed, but no, did not get that lost vacuum. No, it's just without the choice belt, uh, Slacking can't really do anything about the upcoming mm. Lugia Vista, okay, right? Okay, saving so it for later. Okay. You can save it for later. Um, yeah, and that's exactly what we see, this, the choice belt onto the slacking. And Path to the Peak, peak comes down, of course, not utilized in the early game to delay the summoning star. That was still able to happen turn two for Alexander, but 
it does make things more difficult as far as a luminous sign. And Nicolo, I think, thought that he was getting the knockout here, realizes he's not getting the KO, and it looks like he's decided to concede this game. is going to be too far behind, and Alexander gets the win here in game one of the finals. I wonder if he had realized then maybe he would have gone for the lost vacuum plus choice build play. Yeah. yeah, but it seems like he wasn't thinking about this lacking. He just did not realize at that point in time. And the V-Guard coming clutch, like I mentioned, for both players. Allowed the Arceus to survive. Allowed the Lugia V third to survive. And yeah, now I'm, I was left a little bit puzzled by that Greninja grab off the Starburst. Why do you think that was? Yeah, maybe just making yourself Iono proof for later on in the game. But to be honest, for Nicolo, there were a lot of energy cards already in play. Greninja seems really strong early game for this deck. You can help yourself activate Melanie, potentially get a little bit of extra cards, draw power through that, and also energy acceleration. But early, or uh, into the early. mid to the late game, it just yeah. doesn't feel nearly as worth it. Nicolo shaking his head. He's gotta shake it off. Gotta try to center himself and get focused here for this next game. Yeah. Yep, on to the next one. Let's make sure that we find one Ultra Ball, one Argus V-Star, I would have changed things. And now going first as well, which is such a big advantage. I think in this matchup, if you're the Arceus player and you manage a turn two, Arceus V-Star attack, power up with a Judge and a Path to Peak, that's the dream, right? Yes. That's what you're hoping to accomplish. You couldn't do it last time. Let's see if we can accomplish it this time around. We'll have to see if Nicolo gets a little bit better of a setup here in game number two. Uh, number one, we did see, of course, that Choice Belt being prepped on the bench. The path to the peak was going to be massive, but unfortunately does oh, not take the KO with this Trinity Nova. Yeah, those V-Guards coming in clutch. Both players doing the math, double checking. And 100 plus 170, 10 off from Lugia V-Stars to 180 HP. Now. Math checks out pretty nicely there. Mm -hmm. We do see these prize cards being played out to Judge and Nicolo's prizes. That's probably one of the more important supporters in this entire deck, and he only plays three. He only has one to work with. Only one, which if you play in turn two, that's good enough, right? Yeah, <laughs> and we've spoken about bare minimums. Lugia V-Star wants a bare minimum of a Lugia V down. Uh, Arcus V-Star decks want the Arcus V plus an energy. You do that, you've accomplished half, uh, half the game, right? Half the early game, that's all you need. Nicolo does not have much on this first turn, leads with that Arceus V from the opening hand, attaches an energy to it, and just a pass might seem unassuming, but I do believe I saw an Ultra Ball hiding away in this hand. Over on Alexander's side, I think I see four energy cards in this hand. The start of the Snorlax, the bench of the Mew EX. I do not see a Lugia V or a way to get one. Nope, that Mew EX immediately getting benched probably speaks volumes of how bad the hand is, unfortunately. I don't even like this attachment here. I would have preferred it on the Muse so that maybe you can copy Arceus V, deal that damage whilst you establish the Lugia because uh, last game, Nicolo wasn't able to set up at all before it was too late, but this time, yeah, energy attached. We're seeing the Ultra Ball. You have to expect, you have to prepare for the worst, right? And the worst here is turn to Arcus V Star. And which we see is able to happen here. Ultra Ball discarding the basic water energy and the Gyarados V Max. Sad to see that hit the discard pile. I do have to say, but maybe we'll see it in a potential game three, as it does seem like Nicolo is going to get to a very quick advantage in this one. Have to imagine this Ultra Ball will get the Arceus V-Star, and then Starbirth can be utilized to get any two cards. What are the things we're expecting Nicolo to try to set up this turn? He has so many plays available to him. He does, especially uh, usually you want that turn to judge path, right? But when you have the, the confirmation, you don't know exactly what Alexander has in his hand, but he definitely doesn't have a supporter. He yeah. definitely doesn't have a way to get Lugia. So right. you keep that hand. Yeah, now it's just all about setup. Maybe a research and a double turbo. That's good enough. Yeah, find more resources, take that price card, and just hope for a path. Maybe even just double turbo path. You don't need much else. There's no threat whatsoever. Definitely, I think you still want to try to establish something else on the bench. Just help to push your advantage as much as possible. Double turbo, obviously, the first grab here. The problem with research as well is you do have to discard that one choice belt. We talked about how that can be really important in this matchup. And while Nicolo is going to get pretty far ahead to start things off here, he's definitely not going to be guaranteed to win <laughs> by any means. <laughs> there is a lot of Pokemon TCG still to be played. Chooses not to go for any supporter cards and instead opts for an Arceus V to place directly onto the bench. 
Oh, yeah, and we are going to see yeah. that Trinity Nova coming through, taking the knockout on the Snorlax. Didn't even have a gift energy to a attach on Alexander's mm -hmm. end that could have given him a little bit of extra card draw. And it's going to be three energies accelerated. Alexander needs a top deck to even stay in this game. He's drawing for turn. What is this going to be, Pablo? It's, it's a, a gift game. energy, and I think Not that's useful. it. That's game. We're going to game three, I think. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> We're there going we to go. game three. What is what happening? What is happening in this final match? What is going on? I don't want to correct myself. There's actually no Professor's Research in Nicolas' deck, okay, so yeah, sure. that's, <laughs> you cannot grab Professor's Research when it doesn't exist. But yeah, uh, the Arcus V was a good grab you want to play. I also love the Choice Belt on the bench. I think that makes sure that you have a potential threat on a Lugia V if that does get benched, which yeah. is very important. You already built up an advantage. You know your opponent is at least a turn behind, possibly more. And then we go hunting for that Lugia V on the bench. You are able to get even more ahead. So very nice attachment to the bench on that choice belt didn't matter at all we're going to game three and hopefully we get to play a full game this time around this right here is peak pokemon tcg some clunky <laughs> games in the finals and it comes down to a game three two new faces to the scene two players who have not yet cemented themselves in this competitive scene who have not yet made a name for themselves have certainly done so by getting to this point but who will come away the champion Nicolo with the Gyarados VMAX Arceus V-Star or will it be Lugia V-Star flying high once again winning another regional championships I always like to describe uh, the recipe for success in the Pokemon training card game is having good decision making having a good deck and also sprinkling a little bit of luck on the side mm. to make sure that uh, you are able to do well with both of those things. And we are fortunately or unfortunately seeing some of that luck factor majorly into who's going to take that more big than a sprinkling here, More than a sprinkle. I, think, I was trying Pablo. to be kind, but <laughs> more than a sprinkle, that's for sure. Yeah, bad start for Nicolo in game one. Even worse start Even for Alexander worse. in game two. We're going to see a fair game three for sure, right? Sure. That's that's how the universe balances itself, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's exactly what we're going to see. Arceus, please. Let's see these opening hands for the players. Any mulligans on either end? It does look like Nicolo yep. is lacking a basic Pokemon at this time. It's lacking a basic Pokemon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did set that one up for you, didn't you I? You did, you did, yes. And it's rare for me to catch those spots, I, I will say, but I have to catch this one. You're catching up, buddy. You're catching up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and now Alexander, of course, needing to set out the prize cards before, before drawing the mulligan. that mulligan. Yep. A mistake we, we would want, hate to see yes, happen Yes, we do not want again. to see any sort of issue that would... Uh, I want a fair, merit. Yes. good game here for game three of the finals, Pablo. Let's no make it penalties, happen. no penalties. Maximum warnings, but no penalties, <laughs> please. <laughs> seven cards now for Nicolo. Of course, if you draw your opening hand of seven, you do not find a basic Pokemon. You have to send that hand back into the deck, shuffle up, and draw a new one. You always have to start the game with a basic prize cards now going out. The Weird Ear V in the prizes for Alexander definitely is worth noting. A couple of energy cards up at the top as well. Could be awkward. And two yep. pass Basketball. to the peak on Nicolo's end. Oh, yeah, the two pass to peaks. I mean, you only need one. You need to delay that one summoning star. Afterwards, it's less impactful. You do stop Luminion, but it could be. Yeah, it could be. It reduces the odds of you drawing into it, and then maybe you have to Starburst, and then maybe you're having to search for other things at that point in time. But we're gonna start with this capturing aroma. Decent hand, but full of energies, I think. A couple of research and a bunch of energy cards, which is gonna make things pretty awkward for Alexander. If he gets to keep this hand, of course, Nicolo plays plenty of disruption supporters. That's reasonably likely what we will see on this next turn. There is a tail flip on that capturing aroma. Kind of a silly card. I think the first time people read it, nobody really expected it to be mm -hmm. that good. But yep. As the meta kind of became known and as it was realized Lugia V-Star was going to be as good as it became, people kind of realized capturing Aroma is the way to go. You flip a coin, if heads, you get an evolution. If tails, you get a basic. And of course, Alexander finds a basic in this spot. It's another okay, Lugia V that can come down to the bench if he would like. And does have a bunch of energy cards to attach. We could jet energy the bench to Lugia to the active just for fun, you know, get a little movement out there. but. A V Guard energy, I, I think that makes a little more sense. I, I'm, I'm interested as to like why was it on the bench? Why not on the active? You protect. Well, with Jet the... energy in the hand, right? No, oh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. That's I mean, you the can just attach, attach to the active, anyways, right? Uh, but yeah, that's fair. 
uh, spreading out the energy potentially or just using the effect. Um, accomplish the bare minimum, which is bench a Lugia V, actually bench two. And Nicolo is accomplishing also the bare minimum with the Arcus plus energy. Now, big decision here do you Serena or do you Iono? You don't know what's in your opponent's hand, and Alexander's going to be very grateful for mm. that Iono, I think. I think so. I mean, he did at least have a research, so was able to do something on the next turn, but would have been a lot of energy, a lot of resources going down to the discard pile. Both of these players now with this Iono played on Nicolo's end will shuffle their hands, place them on the bottom of the deck, and they each draw a card for their remaining prize cards. It's first turn of the game, both players have six prize cards, so it acts like a pretty good shuffle draw supporter. At this point, later in the game, though, can be extremely powerful disruption. Nest Ball on Nicolo's end has plenty of basic Pokemon to choose from. Already committed the energy, so we're not going to see any sort of Trinity Charge plays, but Radiant Greninja is being brought to the front immediately. Now, that Vengeful Punch in the active, those four damage counters, I'm not sure if they would be impactful in case the Lugia V-Star did manage to KO, 240 HP remaining. Uh, it's not a number that Arceus easily reaches mm. at all, so... Makes it so you don't need the Choice Belt on the slacking later, Makes maybe? Makes it so yeah. you don't need the Choice Belt, that is true. Uh, helps a little bit with the B-card, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And another important card to note is Nicole is playing Defiance Band, which is not a common card we we see paired, and it adds 30, just like Choice Band, but to any Pokemon. Yeah, only, though, when you are behind only when on prize behind. cards. And in a game like this, Nicolo, Nicolo is definitely going to be the one who is uh, more than likely behind. I guess it does depend, of course, on Alexander's hand. We do see Concealed Cards. Does draw a couple, but does miss out on the path to the peak. That would have been a nice card to see to try to slow Alexander down as much as possible. Of course, let's remember two of them are in Nicolo's prizes. Now, Alexander kicks his turn off. No Archeops in the discard pile just yet, but an Ultra Ball being played does discard one. Doesn't look like there is a second one. This could, though, lead to the Luminion using that luminous sign to find out Professor Burnett. Indeed, I do believe there is a Lukia V-Star in hand, so... Going Burnett, you've done your setup, right? And imagine if uh, that Iono had not been played, then you research into this, you, you get to do something, right? But then getting the two Archeops in the discard pile off of our research is never an easy thing. It's not easy to accomplish it. No, and no. it's down to chance as well. And now it's guaranteed, which is really, really nice. It does come at a cost. Of course, you are putting that 170 HP Luminium V in play. It's pretty squishy. It's a liability, and it easily goes down to an Arceus V star. Nicolo will certainly be looking to capitalize on those prize cards as he can, but a trade that Alexander is ready to make. Using that Burnett, discarding the two Archeops, and Lugia V star is waiting in the hand. Indeed. So the full setup accomplished for Alexander, and I think Nicolo will... Uh, do the full setup as well, but the big card missing is definitely the path to the peak. That path to the peak not being in play really helped Alexander, and I think it that was the big thing Nicola was or needed to count on to really have an edge in this match. Primal Turbo finding two special energies will accelerate them to the active Pokemon. Looks like Therapeutic and Gift being some of the choices. Another Primal Turbo being used. You definitely have to be mindful of which energies you're pulling out of the deck. Reversal Energy, probably not going to be useful in this game, so it does make sense to pull that out now. Jet Energy, yep. of course, can be very powerful later on, but you do play four copies of the card. Yeah, so you can definitely spare one, and the most important thing is making sure that you do not attach a double turbo energy. Most of the time, you want to to make it more efficient to attack with Lugia V-Star, but that damage reduction is super important to not have at this point in time. So a little bit more costly, but completely worth it, and Alexander will get ahead in this Game 3 of the Finals. And that is going to be the knockout on Alexander's end, sending that Arceus V to the discard pile. Of course, Vengeful Punch gets a little bit of revenge, putting 40 damage onto the Lugia V star. Nicolo starts his turn, sending up this Arceus, evolving into Bibero right away. Does have the Melanie supporter. Hey, that Greninja discarding the energy last turn ends up being pretty strong. And we're going to see three cards drawn off of this Melanie. There's the Arcus V-Star of the Ultra Ball, which is great. And we see a Nestful as well. We could see Gyarados V set up this turn mm -hmm. as there is the Gyarados V-Max in hand. We could also be uh, seeing this lacking V as well, which could be important. But the V-Card energy being attached in this Lugia, which would probably be the backup attacker for uh, Alexander after the active one goes down, that could play a major role as 
the V guard does protect from slacking B. And let's remember as well with this nest ball being played, that Gyarados V is in the prize cards. Even though V Star or V Max, excuse me, is in the hand, ready to evolve on the next turn. It's just not a play Nicolo is able to go for. And maybe all the way back to turn one, this is what Alexander was thinking by putting that V-Guard energy onto the benched Lugia V instead of putting it onto the active, recognizing, hey, this is going to be more valuable later in the game. I know that this active Lugia V-Star is more than likely going to go down. Let me make sure this one can stick around a little bit longer. We do see Radiant Greninja ditching that double turbo energy. Of course, you do not have to discard only the... Basic energies, you can discard special energies as well. And Arceus V-Star was found, does not even have to use the Ultra Ball for it. That is excellent. Indeed, and now Assurance Care is probably the most important card in Nico's hand right now. You are behind in prize cards, and in order to overturn that, you need to prevent <laughs> your opponent from taking prizes himself whilst you take yours. So that Assurance Care could be very, very impactful, which is very well combined with this Arceus V that did get benched off of that Nest Ball. We might see the slacking towards the end of the match, but for now, this Sharon's Care play could be very impactful. However, there is always a threat of boss's orders on the benched Arceus V. Okay. Yeah, Nicolo, of course, sequencing very well here. Has not used his V-Star power yet. Wants to go with the Industrious Incisors first. See what he draws and then commit his V-Star power. Very smart sequencing, which is what you would expect from someone who has made it to this point in the tournament. Does find yet another Nest Ball. Maybe could hold on to that for slacking v plays later in the game. We'll actually use it now. We could even see that come into play. That is a Pokemon that is safe from a boss's orders yeah. KO, though this Arceus V on the bench is not. So maybe that's something Nicola would want to do, but looks like it will just be burned out of the hand. Indeed. Now, I cannot emphasize enough how sad I am that we're not going to see Gyarados V Max <laughs> probably in this match. Yeah, no, that makes me very, very sad, right but bad, we're going to see the Starbirth, and there isn't an energy already in hand. Doing 180 or 200 doesn't really change the maths right here. Even with a Defiance Band or a Choice Belt, you're 10 damage off from the knockout once again. Where, and oh, where ooh. is Galarian Zigzagoon? Ooh, yeah, here yeah. we go. Look at this <laughs> off of the Starbirth. <laughs> maybe, maybe we will maybe. see the Gyarados <laughs> VMAX. Did I positively jinx this by saying <laughs> we're not going to see it and therefore we are going to see it? Yeah, his Suian Heavy Ball, of course, could fetch that Pokemon out of the prize cards. Any two cards able to be grabbed here for Nicolo does find the V-Guard energy as another choice. That is going to be pretty nice. Maybe give a little bit more survivability to these Pokemon. Would be great if he could get the V-Guard energy on the benched Arceus V, but of course, not possible. Needs to attach to the active Arceus. Indeed, that V-Guard energy could be crucial, which uh, if it's so crucial on a bench Pokemon, maybe that wasn't the right energy to grab right now. Although grabbing another basic energy means you have less and less targets for Trinity Nova. So good choices here. We'll see where uh, whether the V-Guard or the Double Turbo gets attached. Um, perhaps the V-Guard is important to protect from a possible Weirdier play, which Alexander probably drew off of the prizes he took. So there's a V-Guard attached to the active. We did have Melanie as the other attachment, and we're going to see the 200 damage, and I'm guessing the energy goes to the Gyarados. Yeah, we'll have to see. And of course, Alexander does have boss's orders options, right? To KO either the two benched Pokemon. Could even try to ignore this active Arceus until maybe it comes up later. We'll see which route he decides to go and which route Nicolo goes. Looks like it is going to be an energy spread option. Now there is 60 damage missing on the active. There was 40 damage previous, and now we're hitting for 200 damage. Is that the misprinted Arceus V-Star that has 120 instead? Yeah, 60 damage. There we go. There's the fix. And I think if you're Alexander, you see that Gyarados. I think you just want to take it out. You just don't want to deal with the yeah. Gyarados V-Max. That Luxury thing's possibility. got way too much HP. Exactly, yeah. And you're ahead, so the Luxray is uh, probably not an option anymore. The and question is, is there a boss? It does look like there are not one but two bosses orders in Alexander's hand currently, which could be good for back-to-back -back plays. Yeah. Let's see which one he wants to chase here. Gyarados or Arceus, or do you just hit with the active? You probably have to two-hit KO a Pokemon V Star or V Max at some point in this game. Something else Alexander is probably considering as it stands now. Primal Turbo searching the deck. Does eye up a Gift Energy and a Double Turbo. This could go down to the other Lugia V on the bench, waiting for a chance to become a V Star. Indeed, sitting pretty with that V Guard. That V Guard playing a huge role in this matchup and um, 
yeah, that protection is just so, so important. And for both players, even that V guard on the active Arcus Beast are probably protecting from the weirded as well. But it seems like we're not even going to deal with the active yeah. at this point. In well, time. and honestly, too, for Alexander, if you do Boss's Orders KO one of these two prize Pokemon, you can just set up to win with Weird Ear on the next turn. No matter what your opponent has active, yep. you can get enough energy onto the Weird Ear V. -V Thanks to its ability and its attack, of course, will be dealing more than enough damage. Double Turbo in hand can spread these energies out so your opponent can't really take too many of them out of play at once. Of course, more than likely, Nicola will be KOing the active, and Boss's Order says, yeah, I'm not dealing yep. with Gyarados VMAX. Get that thing up here. Alexander, I think, is anti-fun here in this finals <laughs> match. So I did jinx the fact that we're not <laughs> going to see Gyarados VMAX prize. And you can see how important, like, we're seeing Pokemon survive by 10 HP. We're seeing... Uh, Gyarados V get knocked out, where if it had that 230 HP, which now seems to be like that big number that a lot of Pokemon would love to have in order to survive most of the attacks in the current metagame. Nicolo has uh, quite the mountain to climb at this point, and his hand is really not that strong. We're going to see a Bieber L for one, I think. The double turbo was attached to the bench. Could have been used with a Radiant Greninja play. You could burn a couple of these cards. You could switch into the Arceus V and retreat the double turbo energy off that you just attached in the future. And I think that is going to be the play. Of course, you could also just find another Arceus V star, which would work. Yep. And we will see that path come down, meaning Greninja no longer an option. Three cards drawn from Bibarel, Industrious Incisors. Do we see that Arceus V star? We Ultra do. Ball can get you there. Now, Path to Peak has even more relevance because it does stop the Weird Ear V play. Yes, of right? course. Yep. So we do need to find now, other than the Weird Ear, we need to find a counter stadium in order to pull this off. And something else as well, you know, depending on what else Alexander has to do on the turn, maybe can't put a Collapse Stadium in play because you would be limiting your bench too much if he needs to put a Luminion in play to search for a research or something like that. We'll have to see how things develop. Might only be a pair of outs for Alexander from this position. Nicolo does find that Arceus V-Star. That's ready to go. We'll see that Trinity Nova taking the KO, taking two prizes, giving Nicolo a chance to fight back in this game. But can we see the Weird Deer come through, deal enough damage to this active Arceus? There is no V-Guard energy on it. And there's even going to be another card or two drawn from this Gift energy before the Lugia V-Star hits the discard pile. Indeed. Now, if the Weird Ear V is not accomplished this turn, Nicolo does have the Sharon Scare and also uh, the second V Guard. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that Nicolo found that other copy of V Guard to be able to rebench the Arceus and attach that to protect it even I, further. I think Alexander might uh, literally just have it in hand. The yep. Collapse Stadium, there's the Weird Ear V. As long as there are enough energy cards in the deck, I think he has it right here. Primal Turbo can search right now. There's a bunch of jet energies, I think, a couple yeah, double turbo bad. energies. Yeah. Alexander is going for it. There's a couple onto the bench. Primal Turbo, once again, just got to make sure you do the math. It's a lot to think through with the double turbos reducing your damage, but I think there's going to be more than enough energy cards put into play here it for this weird like year it. to move to the active spot. Frontier Road bringing all these other energy cards up to this Pokemon and Psy Shield Bash getting through the massive 280 hit points of Arceus V-Star. Alexander Flatos <laughs> is the Sacramento Regional Champion. GG, 12 energy total. That's 480 damage minus 60, 420 damage in that final turn. What a game we just saw, what a series. Absolutely incredible. You have to imagine Alexander was feeling great after game one. And then that mood totally changed yep. when we saw <laughs> game number two. Start Snorlax, bench Mew EX, pass, I guess. Yeah. And then in game number three, things went very according to plan. Alexander able to get things done. Of course, congratulations and commiserations to Nicolo. Getting to this point, excellent. A second place finish. He gets himself a bunch of championship points. He's $7,000 richer, which is Kind of cool if you ask Very me. Nice, yeah. And he did it all with Gyarados VMAX by his side. <laughs> so not only $7,000, but also cool points added to Nicolo <laughs> for sure, at least from my part. <laughs> and Alexander not only winning this regionals, getting 200 championship points, he earns himself $10,000 for this finish and also an invite to the an World invite. Championships in Hawaii. That very coveted invite, right? This season, it feels like the bar has been risen 
raised, risen, raised. raised. <laughs> there we go. Uh, my English is apparently leaving me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the bar has been raised. It's a little bit harder than last season. We do have a full season with League Cups and League Challenges year round. But yeah, having that auto invite definitely uh, feels you make makes you feel really nice. It's always nice to lock it up. Even if you feel like you can get to 600, just getting that extra little, you know, insurance feels really nice. And here we go, Alexander just jumping so far ahead in game number one. Boss's orders to take not only an Arceus V out of play, but also a couple of energy cards. And Nicolo left reeling, tons of damage left in play. Thought he had a play where he could get the knockout this turn on the Arceus V-Star and Unfortunately, just maybe did the math a little bit wrong. It got super exciting when he found that Arceus yep. V-Star at the right time, right off the Bibarel, but just did not work out. Maybe if he had done the math, we could have seen that Lost Vacuum to get rid of that Vengeful Punch. Indeed, that 10 damage of uh, those V-Guards coming to play for both players, saving the Arceus V initially, and then saving the Lugia V-Star afterwards. And we saw uh, Niccolo concede immediately after. He was going to be a little too far behind. Yeah. At that point. Very reasonable concede, I think. We always yeah. talk about when is the right time to concede. It's definitely, you know, time management is an important skill in the Pokemon TCG. You want to be aware of the clock, even though there was 75 minutes for top cut. Nicolo really did not have a realistic path to win. Wanted to make sure there would be plenty of time for a potential game two in game three. Indeed. And then this game two was the complete opposite. We saw Alexander bench a Mew and pass. And then we saw the Mew go down and we saw essentially a three minute game where <laughs> Nicolo won and getting the dream set up. And then in this game three, it was a whole other story. Yeah, Alexander went first, was definitely advantaged in that spot. Nicolo did not find the path to the peak. I mean, this matchup does look totally different if the path to the peak sticks in play. That's Nicolo's yep. best chance. A pair of them were prized, made things a little more difficult. Alexander did not mind taking that extra 40 damage from the Vengeful Punch. And he just got a little too far ahead, able to KO that first Arceus V. Finding yeah. boss's orders this turn to KO the Gyarados V, never having to deal with a V Max. It's got 330 hit points. I don't think anyone wanted to mess with that if they didn't have to. And this was the winning play. Weird Deer V moving all those energies to the active with the Frontier Road ability and Size Shield Bash, dealing more than enough to take out this Arceus V Star. I'm pretty sure before this weekend, uh, Weird Deer V could have.